Hello everybody and welcome to Murder on the Orient Express. So we played uh, the demo of this a week or so ago and uh, I decided, you know what, I actually had a really good time playing that so I ended up getting the full game. So we're going to start a new game and we are going to play the game full from scratch. So I think we start off in a slightly earlier part of the game than we were in the demo. Uh, I think we're pre-train from just when I clicked on to make sure it was all running. So... Uh, if you have seen the demo video, you won't have seen this part, so this part will be relevant for you. I don't know when we get to that point if it's all the same. I might cut it because we've already played it, or I'll just do it again, I'm not sure. But we'll see when we get there. But here we go. Istanbul, December 15th, 2023. The development you predicted in the Kastner case happened unexpectedly. Please come back immediately. How can it be unexpected if I have predicted it? Wow, well, my friend, is that you? Go to book at the reception, use... Okay, so yeah, we already know the controls. It's not our first rodeo. Press the E button. Wow! Oh. Is it truly you, my friend? Book, it is indeed me. What brings you so far from home? A little affair in Syria. An affair of the heart? No, no, a modest affair of recovering stolen artifacts. But now I am summoned home to England and must leave immediately. This evening? You travel on the Orient Express, I hope. I have made no arrangements yet, as I just learned that an emergency has arisen, and I must return to England immediately. Very well. It will be my pleasure to secure you a sleeper on the Orient Express. If the director of the line insists, I accept with pleasure. And we'll dine together. For I too depart this afternoon. We'll have plenty of time to catch up. I'll have the hotel transfer our luggage. Excuse me, sir. You are the director of the line. The Princess Dragomirov would like to know if she may keep her minor in her compartment on the train. Uh, good morning, Princess. It is an honor to welcome you aboard. There is absolutely no problem for your pet. You will ask about his food? Oh, yes. The Princess Dragomirov would like to know if there is food for miners on board. Insects, uh, small amphibians, baby rodents? Baby rodents? Uh, of course, Princess. Don't worry. Your bird will be fed as you demand. You there. Desk clerk. One moment, sir. Listen to me. Call the police. My train ticket has been stolen. Stolen? Oh, dear. Oh, dear. You travel by the Orient Express, monsieur? Arbuthnot. Captain Archibald Arbuthnot. Formerly British Army, now retired. And yes, I'm taking the Orient Express to Paris. But what business is that of yours? My name is Book. I am the director of the line at your service. And perhaps this gentleman could assist you. He is Hercule Poirot. I... Oh. Uh... But I must make that train. <laughs> a train ticket. Yesterday I recovered artifacts worth several millions. Please, my friend. It's not just any ticket. It's an Orient Express ticket. Very well. I will investigate. Thank you, Poirot. I will arrange a car to Sirkechi station for us. A stolen ticket. Okay, so my map. Talk to Captain. Yep. Let's go and talk to him. How do you know your ticket has been stolen, monsieur? I put it on a table in my room. I came down here to breakfast, and when I got back, my ticket was gone, and other things were on the floor as if they'd been tossed about. Hello, monsieur. I suggest we begin in your room. Will you lead the way? How to find the ticket. 
mind map. So I think this is an introduction to the mind map, really, isn't it? Which we already kind of know about. What can be done to find the captain's ticket? Connect the elements on the left with those on the right. So search his room. Interrogate the neighbors and inspect the door. Et voilà. We'll press it then, shall we? It's not going to come by itself, you know. Floor, Captain Arbuthnot? Fourth floor. Oh, one mystery solved. I suppose I can exercise my powers of observation while we wait. Okay, well, we, we know he's British. Retired captain. And he's not 21. He's definitely not 70. I'd go with 45. That's the right answer. Character analyzers, uh, special workshops. Once completed, the analyzed character will appear on the characters tab of the pause menu. Hit to escape and find it. So we've got two of them so far. Book and Archibald. My room's along here, 411. In a hotel of this quality? A thief? It is a nice looking hotel, isn't it? Come on, come on, don't dawdle. It'll be a disaster if I miss that train. Don't worry, I have a strong suspicion we'll make it. You have locked the door, monsieur? Naturally. This is a foreign country. You have the key card? Of course. We will enter. Makes that sound as if we don't lock doors here in this country. The lock has not been tampered with. Fingerprints, can we take those? Okay, we've got a stain or a pool of something on the floor. Hmm. Water with traces of soap. The water is scented. So he's walked that out of the shower, maybe? A perfume bottle. Empty. Suggestive. Interesting. A perfume. Hey, what? Oh, this is a collectible. I wonder, why has he got a golden moustache in his sink? It's just a collectible. You can never have too many of these. Yeah, you can never have too many moustaches, agreed. Interesting. So what's that waterfall then? Because it's all dry in there. Okay, well, everything's been tossed about, like you said. Interestingly, his wallet has been left behind with what looks like $200 in it or something. The wallet is somewhat warm. It contains just over $200 and the usual cards. Look at that. Contactless payment. 
in an Agatha Christie novel. Um, so yeah, they the didn't come is to. Somewhat warm. It contains. They didn't come to steal anything in particular, then, did they? Because otherwise, you'd take his two hundred dollars. Hmm, a fact sheet from a tour of Saint Sophia. A stamped reservation for the Bosphorus Ferry. Things to do in Istanbul. A brochure for this fascinating city. I mean, we're not seeing anything out of the ordinary here. There's a lot of this is just like holiday stuff. Headphones, a couple of chocolate bars, hotel token. Apparently there's nothing in there. With a moustache. Haha! <laughs> Golden moustache. So, Cashamore, two out of 40. So we've got a lot of those to keep looking for as we play the game. And nothing in there. This window is wide open. Four floors. It's impossible for a thief to have exited through the window. How much of wind's coming through there? Those, those windows are just shaking. Do you think the wind just blew everything around? <laughs> and his ticket's actually under the bed or something? It's got to be, surely, that. What is meddled with him? The conspicuous gallantry cross for meritorious service in Iraq. Yet he only retired as a captain. Interesting. The conspicuous gallantry cross. Yet he only. Re Why does he have that with him? We got here first bank previous balance deposited seven hundred for the hotel. Total balance seven hundred twenty-two. Web bill, MasterCard. He's got a lot of charges. This guy spends the hell. Cause that is well in for over a grand. Hang on, I think we should have uh, inspected that, shouldn't we? A list of travel expenses. But how did these papers end up on the floor? They blew in the wind. Come on, piece it together, Poirot. Piece it together. The bed is skillfully made. Hmm, interesting. This earring, it is not the first time I've seen it, but where? The woman in the elevator. Although I thought hers was green, to be honest. This is more blue. Is he having an affair with her? Is that why everything's on the floor? I wonder. Tab. I think we're ready to uh, put some stuff together here. Choose the right answer. How could the thief get into the room? A thief may have entered through the window. Not likely. A thief may have forced the door open. That's not happened either. A thief may have entered using a key card. My little grey cells did not let me down. Uh, train ticket not in the room. So we've done. So do we need to go and do this now? Yeah, so we need to go and talk to the neighbours. Which neighbours it wants us to talk to? 410? Please clean my room. The room is apparently empty. I will leave it for the moment. Okay. 409 are in then. Or apparently not. Why can't we talk to them? 
or 12. Go away, please. A brief word, sir. I will give you two brief words. Go away. Monsieur. I've been traveling all night from New York. Must I call the management? Pardon, monsieur. I do not believe we have awakened a thief. Talk to the captain. Uh, breakfast, earring, opened window, bed made. Hmm, let's go for open Did window. you leave the window open? No. That must be how the thief escaped. I think not. Unless the thief had wings. And he was a captain in the army. <laughs> Come on. And for a train ticket of all things, it's not like he's lost a briefcase full of jewels or something. Uh... Bed the made. bed is very neatly made, but the corners are not military style. The price we paid for this hotel? I'm not going to make my own bloody bed. Interesting pronoun, that. Yes, we. Oui. Owner of the earring, probably. Let's find out. Why was there an earring in your room? An earring? A previous guest, I suspect. I don't wear them. A give over, yeah. Sure. Just an earring left on the side. And you used the word we. How long were you at breakfast, Captain? A half an hour or so. Just a roll and some coffee. Just a roll and some coffee? What kind of breakfast is that? You're at a hotel. Might as well make use of it. Okay. How long were you at yeah, breakfast? Half an hour. We know, we know. Mind map. The captain invited someone. The window is wide open. Bed is well made. So he invited someone and an earring. A woman spent the night in the room. It's been up to no good. I think that's the reason for everything on the floor. The wind. The wind blew the papers. Yep. The Include. wind. Probably blew the papers on the floor as it came in through the window. Moreover, the door is closed, and I found an earring on the bedside table. The captain invited a woman into his room. Maybe she is our culprit. I'm right again. That happens to me a lot. You're full of yourself, aren't you, Poirot? <laughs> All right, quickly. So, what's next then? Who is the woman? Ah, now, she had green... I thought she had green earrings. Did she wear them? Or did she? Now, she wasn't making eye contact in the elevator. Was she wearing them? I should have been more vigilant. I noticed she was wearing some, but I thought she was wearing, like, green emerald ones. Could it be you? Because you wouldn't make eye contact in the elevator. Which was weird. You... I, that would make sense. Who are you? That was easy. We're only going to talk to her then, do we? Captain Arbuthnot, I have examined your room. Much was revealed, possibly more than you expected. Rest assured, we will soon find your ticket. It's about bloody time. I have a train to catch. As do I. You are traveling on the Orient Express? We. Oui. If you will be good enough to answer a few questions, we may both make our train. Ask away. Please, give me an account of your movements yesterday. I spent most of my day in Istanbul, sightseeing. I returned to the hotel as the sun was setting. The desk clerk can confirm I was alone when I picked up my key. I spent the night alone. I had no visitors in my room. Confrontation. Which of these sentences contains a lie? I spent most of the day in Istanbul sightseeing. I can believe that he had a lot of stuff to suggest that's what he was doing. I returned to the hotel as the sun was setting. Not sure. The desk clerk can confirm I was alone when I picked up my... I can't argue otherwise. I spent the night alone. I had no... That, I don't believe. So... Have you told me the entire truth, Captain Arbuthnot? Of course. I want you to find my ticket. So it was not that? Soapy water. Eerie. 
earring? Can you explain the earring I found on the bedside table? An earring? Ah. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, oh, now he knows me, what it is. Mr. Poirot, I had some business correspondence that wanted answering. The hotel provides help for business travellers. They sent up a secretary. I dictated a letter and she mailed it for me. I hadn't noticed that she had lost an earring. And when did you invite this uh, secretary? This woman may be the thief we are looking for. That was yesterday evening. My ticket was still there when I went down to breakfast. She can't have taken it. Hmm, I see. Never mind. It is easily checked. And uh, there was no other person in your room? No, I swear there wasn't. Ah, uh, well, never mind. If it is not her, there is only one option left. Fine. Please finish your job quickly. I'll be downstairs in the lobby. Hey, just gonna ask the desk clerk then. The Hotel Turcat Leon is a perfect prelude for my journey. Pardon, Monsieur. May I inquire when the staff begins cleaning the rooms? Every morning at breakfast time, sir. After making certain there are no guests in the room, of course. May I speak with the chambermaid who cleaned room 411 this morning? I hope you don't think that one of our staff stole the ticket. No, 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 no. Do not distress yourself. We seek only information. I will summon her at once. Oh, I'd ask her to bring her laundry cart. Okay, what we're looking for here then? Dirty laundry? Talk. Let's talk to her first. Do not be frightened, mademoiselle. Did you clean room 411 this morning? Room 411? Yes, that is one of mine. Did you see a ticket on the desk when you entered the room? I I'm sorry, I, I didn't notice a ticket. There was a wallet, but of course I did not touch it. That's true. Did you open the window? Yes, we always air the rooms. Oh, but I forgot to close the window. While I was making the bed, the person from next door was pounding on the wall. I wondered if he needed assistance. I tossed the dirty sheets in my cart, quickly finished mopping and went to see, but it was nothing. But I'm afraid I left the window open. I'm so sorry. The window left open, papers scattered on the floor. The chambermaid cleaning the room. I believe I can now visualize what happened. So did the ticket blow onto the bed and she put the ticket into the washing accidentally when she went to check? Poirot is not going to touch the dirty laundry. You call yourself a detective. There could be anything in there. All right, let's mind map it. Reconstruction of the scene. So, uh, dirty bed linen, ticket lines in the cart, which is what we think happened. So she parks her cart behind the desk. Then she opens the window. She makes the bed. Then the wind blows. Then it falls into the cart. And then she chucks the dirty laundry onto there and then leaves spilling some soap water on the floor. So the ticket must be in the car. Explain to the captain where to find his ticket. Can we just take it out for it? Give it to him, no? 
Captain, it's in here. Come and do it yourself. Mademoiselle, would you be so kind as to look in the sheets from room 411? And so the missing train ticket completes its strange journey. An open window, a laundry cart, and an annoying neighbor. But chance is the only guilty party in this dark mystery. Mr. Poirot, I apologize. I believe my concern got the better of me, and I forgot myself. Thank you. It was a case of great magnitude. I'm glad I was up to the challenge. And that, I think, is that. So that's task completed. Presumably now we'll just leave. Leave the hotel. Our bags are all packed. I have my ticket and papers. If you give me yours, I'll hang on to mine. But as your secretary... As my secretary, you see to the bags, Hector. Yes. Yes, sir. That man, I have a curious impression of him. As if I were observing a wild animal, uncaged. Are we still leaving? We must leave for the station. Our bags are in the taxi. Did you find the ticket? It was a case most difficult, but somehow Hercule Poirot managed. I knew you could do it. Now we can sit back and enjoy a relaxing train ride. Nice. So now I think we'll be getting towards the the demo part of the game. Istanbul train station. You are in luck, Poirot. Of course, no journey on this train is ever ordinary. This is a special occasion. To celebrate the 140 years of the Orient Express, the engine will be none other than the splendid Pacific 231G558. There she is, Poirot. The most celebrated train in history. Oh, my eyes fill with tears of pride. It is time we were aboard, my friend. Follow me. The wagon lead conductor, Pierre Michel, will direct you to your compartment. Lead the way, book. It was built in France in 1922 by the Compagnie Batignolles Châtillon. At the time of its purchase by the SNCF in 1938, it could reach speeds up to 130 kilometers per hour. <laughs> Wait slow. until you see. It is like traveling back in time. Today, the train is limited to 100 kilometers per hour. I assure you, that will be more than fast enough to get you to Paris in time for your connection to London. In the meantime, you will bask in the magic that is the Orient Express. Good evening, monsieur. Your compartment is number 202. However, I am afraid that all the others are already full. Full? But how can that be? It is incredible, monsieur. All the world elects to travel tonight. All the same, you must find room for this gentleman here. I can exercise my powers of observation while they try to find me a bed. He is a friend of mine. He can have number 201. It is taken, monsieur. What? Number 201? Darling, we have to get aboard. I know, I know. I have heard of the phobia of fear of flying, but fear of trains? Now you're making fun of me. Never mind. We'll board shortly, once our compartment is ready. Notice the young woman from the hotel. She again wishes to watch the old man with his little friend, but not to be seen herself.
Why did you order so much lobster, Hotaru? My dear Freya, I need it for my specialty on the second night. And if the lobster a la mori isn't fresh, the passengers will know. We don't have enough space for my desserts. Tonight, molten chocolate cake. Tomorrow, my specialty. That is not my concern. They will not have room for them anyway. Serve your lobster tonight. Chicken a la mori must be the first night dish for the travelers. It is easier to digest. Ugh, you really are the egomaniac everyone says you are. I have every reason to be. I am the engine. You are just the caboose. Sounds like we're having lobster tomorrow night then. Is everything aboard the train, Hector? In your compartment, Mr. Ratchet. I'm having them disinfect the room again, as you instructed. I also got a call from the Indians. The sale is going through as you expected. There was never any doubt. No other phone calls, Hector, from Geneva or Venice? No, sir. Who were you expecting? Never you mind. Check our tickets. We're not going in until everything is confirmed. The young man seems quite agreeable, but the other. The older man is something quite different. Mary. Not now. Not now. When it's all over, when it's behind us, then. Well, I am mortified. The 140th anniversary, perhaps, such a plague of passengers! Draw some conclusions. The young man fills the role in relation to is his secretary. The videos. What is the woman afraid of? Taking the train? Good. How is the woman feeling? She's worried? Yes. Two chefs, the bone of contention is storage in the refrigerator. Right. I'm glad I was paying attention. Who is this woman watching? These guys. Fantastic. That was easy. It's easy now, I bet it gets more difficult later. Wow, we have a solution. A gentleman has not yet come. An Englishman, a Monsieur Harris. A name of good omen. It is already time to leave. What do I care for Mr. Harris? As Monsieur pleases, I had your things sent straight to your compartment. Unfortunately, you will be with another traveler. No. Only for the first night. It cannot be helped. I will survive, mon ami. Monsieur Book, we can't find enough space in the kitchen refrigerator to store all of my ingredients. How is it possible? His recipes are extravagant. We need to leave something on the platform. If my lobsters don't go, I don't go. And have the passengers of the Orient Express go hungry? Never. Must I intervene? The problem is unworthy of wealth, but I do not intend to starve on the most luxurious train in the world. Go on then, let's intervene. Solve the storage problem. Thank you for coming to help us. It is impossible to fit everything into the Gary's refrigerator. Obviously, my entree are more important than dessert. If Mr. Mori delays his lobsters for a day or two, we can restock at another station. Delay? You ask me to delay? Freya? Calm yourself, my friend. I'm sure we can find a solution. Is that a diagram of the refrigerator? May I see it? Yes. He refuses to look at it. American, pastry chef, and probably 27. Et voilà. So 
what are we going to do here? Solve a puzzle. Why are we playing Tetris? I wasn't expecting this. Is it possible to rotate items, or are they just set as they are? That took a while. Hey, voila. You saved tomorrow night's dinner. Mr. Poor, I will reserve the finest lobster just for you. I look forward to it, monsieur. And to the dessert, mademoiselle. Hopefully. That will be the last mystery you face on our journey, my dear Poirot. Your compartment for tonight only is at the back of the second class carriage, number 102. Tomorrow. You move to a private compartment. His luggage must be immaculate, though. The way he can stack things like that, they couldn't even work that out. Right, uh, find my compartment. Let's go and do that. Now I think we'll end the video for part one. Welcome, Monsieur Bon. I apologize for the delay. Thank you, Monsieur Michel. I am delighted you could accommodate me. Shift. Wrong compartment. I need to find number one. Oh, 102. Two. Thought it was 202. 102. It's going to be down here then. There we go. There we are. 102. Excuse me, I think you made a mistake. You are Mr. Harris? No, my name is McQueen. I... There is no other berth on the train, monsieur. All is arranged. Yours is the upper berth. We start in one minute. The train's remarkably full. En voiture! Listen, sir, if you'd rather have the lower berth, easier and all that, well, that's all right by me. No, 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 you are too amiable. It is for one night only at Belgrade. Oh, I see. You're getting out of Belgrade. Not exactly. Ladies and gentlemen, dinner is served. You may join the rest of the passengers in the dining car. Okay, well, before we make our way to the dining car, I think that will do this part. We will pick that up in the next one. Seems like an appropriate jumping off point. Meet Book in the restaurant car, yeah. We'll uh, we'll jump off here. I'm really enjoying this. I really enjoyed the demo, and I'm really enjoying this uh, this first part of the full playthrough as well. I quite like, I mean, obviously this is going to follow the story of Murder on the Orange Express. 
I quite like a Poirot game series that just does totally different, you know, non non novel mysteries, a bit like they're doing with the Sherlock games. I think that'd be really fun as well because I quite like the the style of this and the character and everything. I'm yeah, really enjoying this. If you are as well, make sure you leave the video a like. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you for another video very soon.